Welcome to the Real Estate Raw Show, hosted by Joe Mendoza. Hi guys, Joe Mendoza here in sunny San Diego. Welcome to my show. Thanks so much for watching, subscribing, and sharing with your friends. Today, ladies and gentlemen, we have a great, great fellow from Dallas, Texas, Georgia Brayu. He's the owner of Elevate Commercial Investment Group. They have acquired $125 million in assets. That's over 1,700 doors, ladies and gentlemen. He wrote an ebook you could find on his website, Multifamily Syndication, Everything You Need to Know as a Passive Investor. Welcome to the show, George Abreu. How are you? Thank you. Thank you for having me, Joe. I'm excited. All right. Thanks. Yeah, me too. Me too. I'm super excited to have you on board. Thanks for taking the time out of your day to be on our show. Mm-hmm. So, George, take us back. The audience doesn't know you quite yet. They want to know George prior to real estate because they too might be wanting to transition or pivot into real estate and investing. So, take us to the beginning of real estate. Yeah. So, before investing in real estate, I was studying to be an electrical engineer. At some point, I realized I really didn't want to be an engineer. Um, you know, I was good at numbers, and that's kind of the path I had gone down. But uh, I wanted to start my own company and wasn't sure what. So I started doing some research and started looking at successful individuals. And it kept going back to real estate, whether it built their wealth or, or helped them build their wealth was real estate investing. So Started uh, looking more into it, ended up getting a coach, and then started doing some single family deals. At that point, I had a W 2 job working in the engineering department at UPS. Finally, did enough consistent deals where I quit my W 2. I felt like I was, um, I could be making more money outside of my full time job. Um, and then started doing a, a ton of single family, uh, wholesales, fix and flips, um, holds, built from the ground up, uh, um, did some small multifamily. And then that led me to about four years ago where um, I guess before that, you know, I, I really wanted to scale. I wanted to be doing um, a large number of deals every year. And um started a construction company to help with that on the fix and flips, but I was getting a little burned out and it was very transactional. And that's when I got introduced to, to multifamily syndications and, and, and buying, being able to purchase these hundred plus unit apartments. Um, and I fell in love with it. So, you know, that I put all my focus investments and construction company towards multifamily. And that's how I got here. Perfect. Perfect. Now you were in college already starting to think about real estate, gone into your career, or were you like five years into your career? What, how, what was kind of like the timeline? No, like before I got m- my degree, I was ready getting pretty deep into, into real estate. Um, literally graduated and got my degree because for my mother, <laughs> more than anything, nice. um, I feel like I could have probably have maybe gone straight into real estate at that point. Um, I had also gotten my, my real estate license and my mortgage broker license. So I was kind of doing that while I was figuring out the investment part. Um, uh, yeah. So, you know, I, I knew I, I took that job at UPS in the engineering department, knowing that it wasn't going to be a long stay. Got it. Got it. And then how long were you into single family and then started to like, Hey, you know what? I better get into syndication and start getting into multifamily. Mm -hmm. Too long, man. Too long. (laughs) (laughs) No, it was, uh, I want to say maybe 11, 11 or 10 years. Um, and it literally felt like a, a, a blink of an eye. Like, um, you know, it was a lot of grinding. Um, I don't fully, fully regret it. You know, I learned a lot, but um, just a lot of work, a lot of work. 
what was probably the part you didn't like the most about fixing and flipping? Uh, you know, I love the taking something ugly and making it beautiful like that part. I love, um, still do, you know, I, I get to do that in multifamily. Um, but just the, the, the transactional part, you know, that it was from one deal to the next, one to the next, one to the next, um, constantly, um, in that, you know, I, I, in multifamily, I'm, I'm, I'm always filling the pipeline, but it's, it's just not so many <laughs> deals. Right. Right. Now you did, you said too long. What was the kind of like the trigger? Was it a turn of the market that you didn't have enough deals or you were just, you got inspired by something? What was kind of like that turning point? You know, I think the turning point was I was starting to build a family. You know, I, 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 I have three little girls. They're seven, five, and four. So, you know, I said four years ago, it kind of makes sense. You know, the, the family was growing. Um, I had no time. And my why is my family. So I had to figure out a way to, to – um, gain that freedom and uh, be able to make the time to spend with my family. That's powerful. You know, family is the driver of many. I mean, including myself. That's one of my big whys for sure. And um, so you have this family, you were doing these fix and flips. And, you know, some people, they're, they're watching this, listening to this. They're even watching TV, right? And seeing the glamour in the fix and flips. Is that <laughs> real or not real? It's not real, man. <laughs> None of those numbers they put up there. I mean, look, we, we made good money. We we had some awesome flips. Um, uh, we had some bad ones. We, um, you know, there were some that we, we put a ton of work into. And then at the end of the day, when you look at the profits, maybe it, on paper it looks good. But when you take into account the time and energy put into it, eh, you know, maybe not. Right, right, right. No, I get it. I've done a number of flips myself in the past <laughs> and I get it. I totally get it. So um, what was the the ramp up period to like get into multifamily? Like, was it an easy shift or did you find some pushback? Like what, what was kind of the, the, the transition there? Uh, you know, I think it, more than anything, it was um, my own mindset. Um, so I was trying to do both the single family and the multifamily at the, at the same time. And, um, kind of the same with the construction company. I was trying to do residential projects, commercial multifamily, um, very spread out. <laughs> um, it wasn't really till I decided, okay, I'm going to ramp down the single family I'm going to get rid of whatever I have and I'm going to put all my focus towards multifamily. Did the same thing with the construction company. I stopped taking on residential clients. Um, and that's when things really started taking off. Now, did you have some holds in single family and started doing 1031 exchanges or you just said, okay, I got this stack of cash. Let me get into multi. It was, um, no holds, just uh, some properties, some new construction properties we had built and needed to sell, a couple fix and flips, um, and uh, some wholesale deals. But yeah, I didn't have to get rid of like a, a portfolio of, of houses. Interesting. So you also did some ground up construction. Yeah. Interesting. Interesting. So why not stay being a developer because some... Some people heard that that's a really lucrative way in real estate. What was kind of like, nah, I'm not doing this either. You know, we were, so we were doing custom, you know, million plus um, houses and um, profits were good. But at the same time, a lot of, a lot of headaches came with it. Um, you know, and it all came down to time. You only have so much time and, and what am I going to focus on? Um, which I do do de development, 
now, but um, mainly multifamily or large land, um, pretty much going going bigger, you know. Got it. Got it. Okay, because so you're still in development, but more in the more um, commercial space. It sounds like in the apartment space. Yes. Yes. Got yes. it. That makes sense. That totally and I brought on a, on a team where I'm I'm not carrying the the heavy load either. Perfect. How big is your team right now? Um, between investments and construction. Absolutely. Payroll, uh, employees, all of the above. Uh, twenty plus. I don't, somewhere, yeah, between twenty and thirty. And what's your specialty in the group? Mine. Yes. I. Uh, no specialty. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'm the, <laughs> you're, you're the visionary. Yeah, I was, yeah, you took the words out of my mouth. Um, you know, I'm the I'm the visionary. I like to make sure we're we're all steering in the same direction and everybody's on the same page. Um, and you know, I, I pretty involved in acquisitions. Um, and obviously on the the capex when when we do our capex projects um but yeah i try not to get too 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 in the day-to-day -day functions yeah great leaders typically that's what they do they got to lead 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 with their vision mm -hmm. i would imagine with the engineering background you're pretty darn good at numbers yeah i'm i'm pretty good perfect so what do you typically look for if you've got an existing performing asset what are some of the different uh things you look for on the buy side right when you're about to acquire um things i look for as far as where where we can add value or yeah yeah exactly so like hey it's performing at a you know eight cap and we could do a pro forma and go this way uh, by doing this, this, and this, um, what, what are some of the different specifics that you typically look for? Yeah. I mean, we, you know, the obvious is we always look at the rents, you know, can, can we raise the rents? Um, is it proven in the market? You know, we never want to be the first to try and hit some type of rent bump. Then once we look at, other income, you know, we look at other, in, in, is there any other income we can add on? Um, same thing. We look at the market, see what they're doing, see what um, we think we can get away with. Um, and then we jump into the expenses. So where, where do we think um, we can cut some expenses? Um, does the payroll make sense? Or um contract services, you know, what, what contracts do they have and, um, utilities is a big one. You know, can we come in and, and do, um, some water conversation conservation and, um, save on the utilities. Got it. Got it. What has been one of your biggest, um, acquisitions most recently? Um, most recently, it would be, we closed on a 1,275 unit portfolio. Um, that was the end of last year. That's fantastic. Now portfolio. So that was like several different buildings or a mix? Five, of five properties. Five, 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 yeah. Five apartment buildings. Correct. Nice. Good stuff. <laughs> and so, um, and when you bought it, if you don't mind sharing, it's up to you. Like, what did you buy it for? Uh, how's it performing now, et cetera? Um, yeah, it was, we came in at a pretty good basis um, for, for the area. Um, I want to say the exact purchase price is uh, taxes, but. <laughs> <laughs> of course. Um. And uh, collections was a little rough in the beginning of COVID. Um, we were able to push through and, and get the occupancy up. And um, we've used a lot of uh, rental assistance, like local rental assistance and, and been able to help the residents so to get the collections up. Um, and we're working on getting a refi right now. So Very nice. What was the vacancy at that point on actuals when you acquired it? 
It's a good story there. Um, it wasn't what we were told it was. <laughs> All right. Um, Love to hear it. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I can't remember the exact. Um, I want to say maybe high high eighties is what it was supposed to be, or or occupied or vacancy. Occupancy. Sorry. Okay. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Occupancy. Twenty um, percent vacant. Yeah. No, it was either it was either high high eighties or low nineties occupancy, um, but um, a lot of that was just residents that they had thrown in there. They hadn't qualified them, um, and we had to do a lot of cleanup in the beginning. So they kind of cooked the books. You are saying? Yeah, yeah. Oh wow! When did at what point did you realize? Were you already done? Did you already own it or were like mid? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. We, we, we learned we should have, uh, you know, we walked every single unit. We did our due diligence. Um, we literally walked every single, you know, 1,275 units. Um, we should have probably walked it one more time um, and, and done another round of verifications. Um so we're, we're doing that on our new acquisitions. Um, but yeah. Nice. <laughs> Lessons learned, right? Yep. Yep. <laughs> so what, I mean, you've got a good amount of doors. So what's kind of your business plan moving forward? I mean, are you tar targeting 5,000, 10,000 doors with kind of the model from here? 10,000 10, is my target right now. Um, I had originally said by the end of next year, I wanted to hit 10,000. That's um, before we got hit with this pandemic. Um, that kind of threw a wrench in the plan. So target is still 10,000, just probably not by the end of next year, maybe the following year. Nice, nice. Now, if there was a secret sauce to your success, what would that be? Hmm. Um, I would start with focus. I think that's really what, um, helped propel um, to get to where we are now um, is you know just focusing. There's a lot of a lot of noise out there, and uh, especially even just in real estate investing, there's a lot of different um, angles you can take and um, different uh, sec sectors to look into. And then um, the other thing is. Uh, be willing to, to partner with others and, and uh, co-GPs on deals to to kind of help uh, scale and, and get into more units. Awesome. Awesome. You have a great book in your background there. I'm Tracking sure it's it. probably one of your favorites. What can you share about that to the audience? Uh, I do know about the book, but I'm sure the audience, not everybody knows about the book. What do you like about that book? First off, it's traction, ladies and gentlemen, if you're just listening to the show, what do you like about traction? Yeah. So, I mean, it's, um, EOS, um, it's a pretty much a operating system for a business, you know, um, I've built several businesses now and, um, I've built some without that in mind and, um, it can be painful. So um, it's different when you start building a, a business and you're building it like a business and you actually have systems and procedures and, and um, ways to track your, your KPIs, keep, keep performance indicators. And um, you have your, your team tracking their own KPIs. Um, it just makes a huge difference. Makes it a lot easier to, to run the business. Nice, nice. Now, um, talking about systems, do you have any favorites uh, that you use or are they all proprietary that you built them on your own? Um, like you mean like software or just like? Yeah, yeah, to run your business. Oh, yeah. Oh, okay. Um, yeah, I mean, we... Um, use so many different softwares, almost too many. No, but, um, I love Asana. Uh, Asana is great for, for management tasks. Um, 
And then um, in the construction company, we have a, a property, uh, sorry, project management software um, that gives access to our clients. And then obviously internally, um, that's been a, a game changer, makes managing a project a, a lot easier. Um, yeah, probably the, those two are my favorites. Nice. Now, if you wanted to have one thing that people will remember you by, especially for this show, what that what would that one thing be? Oof, that's a good question. Um, one thing, um, man, uh, know your why. Don't say you don't have time. It's you got to manage your time. You got to know what your know your why, know know your priorities, and then make the time and focus. I love it, love it. Well, I could tell you're extremely focused. You mentioned your family. You know your why. So yeah, that that would probably be a good secret <laughs> to your success, George. All right, man. Well, this was great and amazing. Any last advice, somebody who's on the fence, what would you recommend? Best way is to get a hold of you. Yeah, um, I've got a ton of free content. You know, um, I like getting the word out there as far as um, one for passive investors, because I, I don't think, um, you know, it's said enough that there's alternative investments versus just stocks or um, putting money in, in your 401. Um, and then to help, um, investors get started and, and find some deals. If they, if they go to my website, elevatecig.com, um, you'll see a, a bunch of that free content. And then, um, if they want to go ahead and shoot me an email at George J O R G E at elevatecig.com, um, I can shoot them over some checklists and different things to help them get started. Oh, that's cool. That's cool. Well, thank you so much, George. This was awesome. Thanks for so much for your words of wisdom and all the best. Thank you, Joe. Same to you, man. Wow. I hope you enjoyed that as much as I did. I hope you learned as much I, as I did or more. So guys, look at the comment thread. If you've seen something or heard something, want to learn more about something, please put it on the comment link below. If you're not a subscriber yet, go ahead and hit the subscribe button. Go ahead and smash that bell to hear the latest and greatest on the show. Follow me on Facebook. Follow me on Instagram. I'm putting this channel together to hopefully add incredible value to you. And if you want to learn more about investing, you're new to investing, I highly recommend this book, Flex with a Plex. Also, this book, if you're having some challenges, as you can see, everybody on the show had some kind of adversity, including yours truly. So I shared a lot of that on Make It a Comeback, giving you some incredible tips to make a comeback. So get either one, Flex with a Plex, or Make It a Comeback. If you want to get more tips, go ahead and go to JoeMendoza.com. Again, subscribe, share, like. Make a comment below. I really, really appreciate you. Want to add incredible value and wish you all the best in your success in real estate and in life. Take care. Our company is not responsible for the success or failure of your business decisions relating to any information presented by our company or our company programs, products, and or services.